Welcome to the 2021 Boys Lacrosse Rules and Regulations Interpretation Meeting. My name is Bo Rugg, and I'm a Senior Director of Officiating and Sport Management at the Ohio High School Athletic Association. We are so pleased that we are getting ready for a season in 2021. Thank you for being patient through these trying times. Please read this slide before advancing. We've had some problems with the Chromebook devices recording attendance for the users. We strongly recommend you use a different device. There will be some COVID-19 considerations and modifications, but the Ohio Department of Health approves and revises our documents. We do not have their revisions at this time, so we will send out the documents to all schools and all coaches as soon as they are available. Here are some resources that will help you through this season. As you know, we didn't have a season last year, so the National Federation of High School Sports did not print a rule book for 2021 because there were no changes. So we will be using the 2020 NFHS rule book. You have our OHSA handbook and the OHSAA Boys Lacrosse Coaches Guide online at your disposal at www.ohsaa.org. Each school is required to complete the rules interpretation meeting. This records the time you spend on how many screens you view. Please don't call us for verification. It takes about five to seven days. Athletic directors and coaches can check their MIOSHA profile for proof of attendance. The purpose of this meeting is to give you some administrative policies and to give you some plain rule highlights and points of emphasis. While high school boys lacrosse coaches are required to take this meeting, we encourage all assistant, JV, freshman coaches, and any volunteer coach to look at this presentation because all coaches are under the same regulations. Practice may begin on February 22nd, but remember all teams must have a three-day acclimatization period in boys lacrosse. You can find these details in the boys lacrosse sports regulations 1.10 and 1.11. You can get those online at www.ohsaa.org. Remember, all athletes joining the team for the first time at any point during the season must participate in the three-day period. From now until February 22nd, you may do a lot of things. Just make sure you stay within regulations while you're doing those. Regular season games may begin on March 19th and not before. Scrimmages may be played any time after the acclimatization period and any time through June 5th. The Ohio Administrative Code and OHSAA bylaws require all coaches to meet the Ohio Department of Education standards to receive a pupil activity permit. This includes all volunteer coaches, as well as paid coaches at all levels. We're gonna talk about some non-mandatory activities in the next several slides. First, open gym or open nets. That's found in general sports regulation 10. You can't coach or instruct during this and you can't run drills. You can't do any timing or scorekeeping. Coaches may play, but they can't coach. As far as weightlifting and conditioning, that's in general sports regulation nine. You can't include specific sports skills or training or instruction. They can be conducted at any time, but they cannot be conducted for select group of students. Individual instruction found in general sports regulation 8.2 may happen any time outside the season with the exception of the no contact period in August. You can do shooting techniques, wall ball, ground balls, individual skills, anything you want, but you can't do team drills 
or scrimmage, and you can't ever have more than four present at any time. Boys Lacrosse Regulation 2.6 talks about indoor lacrosse. You can't have more than seven players or fewer than two. In indoor lacrosse, the OHSA's out of season player restrictions are not a factor, except if your school coach is coaching, then the 50% rule is in effect. Sports Regulation 7.5.1 permits instructional days. This was changed to make these days unlimited between June 1st and July 31st. Junior high days are separate from high school days. Remember, anytime you have more than five individuals present, it is an instructional day. Remember the change last year that all school coaches may coach players in all grades seven through 12 outside the season in club or travel games, as long as the 50% limitation is in effect. You may not coach more than five players from your school on the same team. Scrimmages may begin as soon as full contact is permitted. Each high school is permitted to play three per season. Teams may play in a bordering state at any time during the season and as often as they wish but teams may play in a non-bordering state only one time. If it's a scrimmage or a game, it needs to be the same for both teams when you are playing out of state. Unfortunately, ejections happen. Let's go over some of the rules as it relates to ejections. For coaches, they're out for all games the remainder of that day and all contests until two at that level of competition are complete. Coaches must leave the site, they'll pay a $100 fine, and they will complete the NFHS course online. Players are also out for all games the remainder of the day, and all contests until two at that level of competition are complete. Players stay in the bench area for the remainder of that game. They may travel to away games while they're suspended, but they cannot be in uniform and they may not participate in warm-up. Ejections for fighting have changed. Everything about ejections is the same, with the exception of the number of contests you must sit out. If a coach or a player is ejected for fighting, they must sit out four contests instead of two. All ejections have their own story, but any official's decision in a game cannot be appealed, and that includes ejections. There are no appeals. Coaches and officials must complete the concussion course every three years. There's a new concussion course for players on the nfhslearn.com site. I highly encourage you to have your players look at this presentation. We have a tournament selection process that puts officials into pools. Coaches rate officials and we have others that vote. Instructions for rating officials are on page 18 of the coaches guide. We highly encourage you to rate officials. Someone is responsible for the administration of games. We must ensure the safety of officials, deal with unruly fans, and handle medical emergencies and any crisis management or weather issues. Someone has to be responsible. It might be you as the coach. Please get the officials involved with game administration when you have any issues. Uniform and equipment regulations are found in the NFHS Boys Lacrosse Rules, Rule 1, Section 9, there are no exceptions to the equipment rules. Field diagrams are also located in the NFHS rule books. We do allow the unified field as an option, but we will be playing neutral site tournament games and our state tournament on gender specific lines. The OHSAA safety policies 
in regards to inclement weather are now in line with the National Federation. You may see these in the NFHS Boys Lacrosse Rulebook on page 103. Any lightning seen or thunder heard, evacuate the field and take cover. The 30 minute rule may be in effect. It is always in effect if thunder is heard. Under certain conditions, if there's lightning seen but no thunder, it may be a distant storm and in these cases, we may be able to continue play. The coaches, administrators, and officials will get together to determine this. When lightning is seen and there is no thunder, you may use a mobile device or any technology to determine if it's safe to play. The coaches, the administrators, and the officials need to get together to make this decision. You can't depend on this technology all the time, but there are certain conditions where it may be safe to play. Remember, if you have had a delay, you may shorten or eliminate halftime. That is up to the game administrators and the coaches whether they would like to do this. If we have a delay, all players and coaches must be out of the field area during the suspension. Officials will do what they have always done, as will game administrators. If any of these people see lightning, stop the contest. Then everybody can get together and determine if it's safe to continue. Remember, if we've heard thunder, we are stopping for 30 minutes. Game administration, coaches, and officials must work together on inclement weather issues. A game that cannot be completed for any reason will be treated as a suspended or interrupted game. If the game is to be continued, it will be continued from the point of interruption. Games must be completed unless both coaches agree not to complete the game. By mutual agreement of the opposing coaches and the referee, any period may be shortened or the game may be terminated. Ninth through 12th grade athletes may play in a maximum of 92 quarters for the season plus the OHSA tournament. Coaches are responsible for the tracking. A change last year, a player is permitted to play in a maximum of two games per day, up to a maximum of six quarters per common opponent, except for play days. Overtime is considered the extension of the fourth quarter and does not count as an additional period. Remember, you're allowed three scrimmages and 18 regular season contests. Only high school varsity games will play overtime. Varsity games cannot end in a tie. Play by NFHS overtime rule, which is Rule 4, Section 29. Check your rosters. Students who go to one school from another are ineligible unless they meet one of the nine exceptions. If they don't, they're ineligible after game nine, and they may not play in postseason tournaments. Comments to the news media is not being in front of a microphone anymore. This includes Facebook, Twitter, any type of social media. Please think first before you make a comment to the media. Looking ahead to tournament play, the boys lacrosse tournament will be run out of the OHSA office again. The regional assignments will largely remain the same. Of course, depending on if we have a lot of teams that do not enter the tournament from a certain region, or we have a bunch of new teams, uh, we may have to adjust the regions. The draw will be on May 9th, and the state finals will be June 5th. We don't consider distance traveled to a contest 
or a team playing on multiple fields as an issue. Rain or less than ideal field conditions is not an issue, unless of course we have lightning and then we'll be suspending play. And we'll play on the best surface that we can find between the two schools. The following slides will cover specific rules and points of emphasis and will be delivered by Lee Spitzer, our Director of Officiating Development for Boys Lacrosse. Due to the COVID crisis, the NFHS Rules Committee decided there would be no rule changes for the 2021 season. The 2020 Boys Lacrosse Rulebook is the rulebook for 2021. You should have received your Boys Lacrosse Rules book in your official's mailing. If you did not, please contact Ben Faree at B-F-E-R-R-E-E -E -E at OHSAA.org or call the OHSAA office at 614-267-2502. The rule changes and interpretations to be discussed are not subject to change or modification. Any statement or question indicating displeasure with a rule, its interpretation, or attempting to promote a change in the rule or interpretation is not in order at this time. Any person having questions about an interpretation of the NFHS Boys Lacrosse Rules should contact the Boys Lacrosse Rules Interpreter designated by the OHSAA. The following procedures have been adopted for face-offs in 2021. Face-off players would be socially distanced until directed down by the face-off official. The face-off official should put the ball on the ground and back away. Face-off official then instructs face-off players to go down for the face-off. Both players shall immediately align correctly. Officials are being asked to have zero tolerance when players are not aligned properly. The penalty for this will be delay of game, a technical foul. The face-off official shall give the set command and then blow the whistle to start play. The face-off official will wear a mask to conduct the face-off. Our number one priority each time we take the field must be the safety and welfare of the players. Call the safety fouls. Hits to the head and neck and targeting should be penalized by multiple minute non-releasable penalties. Now we will review the 2020 boys lacrosse rule changes that are in effect for 2021. Rule 911 puts in place new standards for shoulder pads and goalie equipment. Noxie ND200 will provide Commodio Cordis protection for all lacrosse players. Goalie chest protector requirements begin January 1st of this year and player shoulder pad requirements will begin January 1 of 2022. Continuing with Rule 911, beginning January 1, 2022, jerseys shall be of contrasting colors for opposing teams. The home team shall require light colored jerseys, and the visiting team shall wear dark colored jerseys. The visiting team is responsible for avoidance of similarity in colors, but if there is a doubt, the referee may request the home team to change jerseys. Rule 27 2 addresses the responsibilities of the CBO. The requirement of the CBO to count too few players on the field has been eliminated. He is still required to count too many players on the field. Rule 4-5 clarifies definitions for play of the ball to include restart, shot, and airborne players. Rule 4-22 changed the restart procedure to allow a defender to be closer than five yards to the offensive player with the ball. However, the defensive player may not defend the player in possession of the ball until that player reaches a distance of five yards from the defending player and allows the player in possession of the ball a direct path to the goal. Any offensive player must establish a five yard distance from the player in possession of the ball. The penalty is a 30 second technical foul for delay of game. Rule 424-6 clarifies that all concussion timeouts are now charged as an official's timeout. Rule 5.5 simplified illegal stick rules and allows players the opportunity to correct the issue. All deep pocket and stick measurement violations are now a two minute non-releasable penalty. The one minute and three minute penalties from previous years have been eliminated. All sticks may now return to the game once they are corrected. Rule 5.10. When a player throws his stick at the ball, another player, 
or other game personnel in this unsportsmanlike conduct, the penalty for throwing a stick is a one to three minute releasable penalty. If a player throws his stick, but not at the ball, another player or game personnel, it is a technical foul resulting in either loss of ball or a 30 second penalty. Rule 611 clarifies the awarding of a technical foul. If the team fouled has possession of the ball or there is a flag down on the offending player's team, the result is a 30 second technical foul for the offending player. If the ball is loose and there is no flag down, the ball is awarded to the team that was fouled. Rule 621 clarifies crease violations and goalie interference. When the defensive team has possession of the ball, crease violations are penalized as follows. If there is no flag down, any crease violation or goalie interference while the ball is in possession of the defensive team outside of the crease results in a slow whistle flag down situation. If there is no flag down, any crease violation or goalie interference while the goalie and the ball are in the crease, whether or not he has possession is a play on. If the goalkeeper has possession and fails to run the ball out or successfully complete an outlet pass, the ball is awarded to his team in its offensive half of the field at the center. If the ball is loose in the crease and the goalkeeper gains possession, the play on is over. If there is a flag down on a team that commits a crease violation or goalie interference, it is an immediate whistle for the second foul, whether there is possession or not, and regardless of the ball location. Both the initial foul and the crease violation for goalie interference are time serving. Rule 652 appears to contradict Rule 510. However, if a player throws his stick, but not at another player, game personnel, or the ball, it is a technical foul resulting in either loss of ball or a 30 second penalty. Now let's look at the 2021 boys lacrosse points of emphasis. They are sportsmanship and conduct of players and coaches, player safety, improving the pace of play, and changes in equipment and uniforms for 2022. The explanation for these points of emphasis can be found on page 94 of the NFHS rulebook. Let's review and reinforce the points of emphasis from 2019, 2020. They are sportsmanship, stalling, targeting, holding, and warding. For rule interpretations, contact Lee Spitzer at this email address, or you can contact me, Bo Rugg, at my email address.